Hello and welcome to this episode of The Arts Overlook. I'm your host, Chris Bowden. Each episode highlights the arts and entertainment of the Cedar Valley. In this episode, we'll be stopping by a new and exciting business that offers you a chance to create your own artwork and stepping inside one of the most iconic structures in the Cedar Valley to catch a glimpse of a very unique instrument. This episode of The Arts Overlook starts right now. Art is thriving in the Cedar Valley. It's everywhere. But if you don't know where to look, you could miss it. This is your local arts perspective. This is the Arts Overlook. The citizens of the Cedar Valley are always looking for new ways to get engaged in the arts. And if you're looking for a fun and creative way to spend a night on the town, be sure to stop by Cedar Valley Art and Wine. Offering classes to create your own paintings on a 16 by 20 piece of canvas, the studio offers a unique environment to relax, create, and even enjoy a beverage or two. Here's a glimpse at Cedar Valley Art and Wine. If you find yourself searching for a new artistic adventure, Cedar Valley Art and Wine in downtown Cedar Falls is a must stop. Officially opening on September 12th of 2014, Kim Blakesley's new business offers a unique opportunity to put your artistic abilities to work in a fun and relaxing way. Cedar Valley Art and Wine is a place to come and literally have a good time painting a picture. We use a 16 by 20 inch canvas and the, the process is you bring in your own wine or beer or non-alcoholic beverage. We supply everything else, all the way from all the painting supplies to your glasses, uh, corkscrews, we have snacks, good music, and we just have a fun time. Guided painting studios are beginning to gain popularity throughout the country, and after experiencing a similar class on the West Coast, Kim wanted to offer the same opportunity with her own personal touch for the people of the Cedar Valley. Art is a passion has been all of my life. Um, and then when I went into teaching, I taught both art and business, then I went to just art and uh, moved into administration but still did art on the side. And this just was, I wanted to share my love for art with everyone because everybody can paint. Uh, it's just knowing the process is to paint. So we walk you through step by step from start to finish to um, complete your painting. Tucked away behind the library on State Street, Cedar Valley Art and Wine is in a newly renovated location that's allowed them space to grow as the business has gained popularity. We basically drove around and found this, and that was in June. Um, the landlord was doing work in it. So once we got that complete, uh, I moved in, and the studio has just exploded. People are really enjoying it. So I decided, okay, let's give them more options, more choices, so we moved over to Studio B. So we're still in the same building, just across the hall from one another. And with both studios open, we'll be able to have one that'll be totally private events, and then we'll have another one that'll be public events. So we'll always have a studio open to the public. And if you're worried your painting skills aren't up for the task, no need to worry. The staff at Cedar Valley Art and Wine is more than confident you'll walk away with a finished piece that you can be proud of. As a teacher, you always look for those aha moments with kids in school that they're actually getting what you're teaching, and that's in anything. Well, for adults, the majority of them that come in here have never really painted since school. And it was basic painting that they did in school. And so many of them say, um, I can't draw a stick person. And I'm like, you're exactly the one I want to talk to at the end of class. Please come and see me. And they're just so excited because they actually can do the painting. We are not teaching how to paint. We are teaching how to paint the painting. So it's a whole different concept. We're not trying to teach uh, the process. We're just trying to teach the end result. So we don't do things all the kosher way of doing things as far as the painting rules and instructions go, but we are all completing paintings. Throughout this process, you can expect plenty of guidance, hands-on teaching, laughter, rockin' tunes, and yes, even a beverage of your own choosing in a laid-back atmosphere. They come in and we check them in and get their canvas and then they are able to select any seat that they would like to sit in. I usually show them where I teach so they can, if they want to be close, they can be there. If they want to be far away, they can be far away. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then I have them get whatever they want to drink and grab a snack and head back, wait till everybody gets there, and then we start. So they get to hear a little bit about me and my rules of the studio. 
because since I was an educator, we do have to have rules when we walk in. So we have only two, and they're not hard to follow. So that's how we, that's what they see, and then we get started with the painting. Everybody feels good after they do the initial steps, so. And the wine helps. The wine and beer helps to loosen them up a little bit. Many painters who finished a session have been surprised by how simple and enjoyable the process has truly been, and guarantee that there's no need to worry or have any experience beforehand. I've got four artists besides myself that work in the studio, and we all are very capable of going from start to finish. Uh, the paintings usually take four steps, usually have three to four breaks, and you, leave, you start with a blank canvas and you leave with a finished one. And with the success of Cedar Valley Art & Wine's painting studio, Kim hopes this opens up even more opportunities to provide several hands-on experiences for everyone to create and enjoy. My ideal would be to actually have this really nice building with several different rooms in it where we could view all kinds of mediums. Um, I could take and bring in several different artists and we could literally just enjoy the arts. So that's where, what my ultimate goal would be. Now, whether I'll make it or not, that's another story. After spending even a brief period of time in their studio, I'm confident you'll be able to create a masterpiece of your own. You may even catch me there creating something for myself. Sessions at Cedar Valley Art & Wine are available every week, and you can sign up or get more information on their website at www.cedarvalleyartandwine.com or by giving them a call at 319-939-4356. Thanks again to everyone at Cedar Valley Art & Wine for the fun and letting us tell a part of your story. For nearly a hundred years, the UNI Campanile has served as one of the focal points of the University of Northern Iowa, whether by offering a stunning view of campus or an excuse for college students to sneak a kiss. The Campanile has offered plenty of school pride, tradition, and memories. However, many people may not have had the opportunity to venture into the Campanile and catch a glimpse of the enormous instrument hiding inside. Here's an inside look at Carl Kelderman's playing the UNI Carillon. Since 1926, the UNI Campanile has served as the literal and figurative centerpiece of the University of Northern Iowa. And while the towering structure itself is a sight to behold, the Campanile also holds one of the largest and rarest instruments in the world, an array of bells known as a carillon. Nationwide, there are little less than 200 carillons and probably 50 universities have carillons, and uh, if you go further west, there are several states that don't even have carillons, Washington State being one, Idaho, I believe Nevada does not, uh, New Mexico doesn't, so it's, it's unique. Originally consisting of 15 bells, the UNI Campanile added to its range in 1968, and now holds 47 bells weighing in at 12 and a half tons, all hanging at the top of the structure. And sitting in a room just below these bells is the carillon itself, an enlarged keyboard which closely resembles that of a piano, except you're playing with your fists rather than your fingers. On a piano, you push a key down and the hammer strikes the wires. On the carillon, you push a key down and the hammer strikes the side of the bell. So it's a very straightforward, simple connection between the two. And the bigger challenge is not so much that you're depressing keys that are moving, you know, a couple of inches. The bigger challenge is to try and get something really musical out of what you're doing so that people that are outside can, in fact, hear and understand what it is you're doing. That's, that's the biggest challenge. And learning to play a carillon is no easy task either. With chords and faster music requiring multiple notes and only having two hands, a caroliner plays the keyboard with both their hands and feet simultaneously. And Carl Keldermans, the current player of the UNI Campanile, has been perfecting his craft for many years. I was 13. That's when I first started taking lessons. And uh, I was near, um, a car I, I was a keyboard player most of my life. And well, I started on a recorder, which is the wood flute, and then uh, moved up to piano. I played clarinet and other instruments, other keyboard instruments, piano and harpsichord, and then was near the carillon, so which is the way everybody starts. You hear that, you think, oh, that's kind of neat. With two master's degrees in campanology and carillon performance, the former president of the Guild of Caroliners of North America, and having studied at carillon schools overseas, Carl has had the opportunity to provide music and entertainment to a large variety of audiences. The interesting thing about playing the carillon is that you get to travel to wherever the instruments are. 
So I have been fortunate in that I have been able to travel not all the way around the world, but a lot of places, Australia and, and all of Europe, uh, unless you have what's called a mobile carillon. The carillonors are one of the few musicians that have to go somewhere else to play on a particular instrument. Several UNI music students also have the opportunity to play the carillon throughout the year, most notably during camp and kneeling at homecoming. And a variety of concerts by others can also be heard at special events or even during an ordinary afternoon on campus. And in order to reach the instrument at the top, visitors must climb several stories up a spiral staircase and then a short ladder to the platform above. One of my good buddies was a, a guy named Bob Burns who was a student here in the late 60s, um, graduated, went away for a year, came back and became the Carolineur. So Bob Burns uh, was playing the carillon, came to Springfield in the late 70s for a playing competition and came in second. Since that time we were friends until he passed away from a stroke in 2004. But it's really just since Bob has passed away that I've kind of become the, I guess you would say, interim carillonor. The UNI Campanile continues to be a treasured and beautiful landmark at the University of Northern Iowa. And anyone is welcome to stop and enjoy the music anytime you hear it ringing out over the city of Cedar Falls. The UNI Campanile truly offers a one-of-a-kind musical experience. And if you're interested in getting an inside look at the Campanile for yourself, the space is open to the public whenever a concert is taking place. You can find several concerts listed on the UNI School of Music's website at www.uni.edu slash music, or you're welcome to venture up if you simply happen to hear the bells ringing across campus. That's all for this episode of the Arts Overlook, and as the Cedar Valley continues to offer an enormous array of activities to get involved, I encourage you to keep engaging in the arts right here in your own backyard. I'm Chris Bowden, and thank you for watching.